Hi, I'm Rhiannon, and I'm going to show you how to complete a Pareto analysis. So I'm just going to share my screen where I have my data. I'll just zoom in on that. So here I'm doing a Pareto analysis on some demand data. In this case, I'm looking at the number of occurrences of uh, demand in a particular week. And it's important that you make sure you're happy with the time frame that you're looking at. It might be weekly, it might be monthly, you might look at data over a year. But you can see I've got these demand types A to H here, all with the different number of occurrences identified. Now, the first thing I'm going to do with this data is I'm going to put a filter on and I am going to order it by size. So I want this list to be descending. Oops. There we go. And once I've done that, I'm going to add a sum to the bottom of the list to add them all up. Then I'm going to add a formula to calculate the cumulative frequency of each of the demand types. So I'm just going to head this up. And then I'm going to put a formula in here that basically adds each number to the one to the sum of the one before and divides it by the total. So let me show you an example. So I've just dragged that formula down. So if I look at here, what I've got is I've got all of these numbers, the sum of all of those numbers. So 90, 167, 90, 800 added up, then divided by that total. That gives us the cumulative frequency. Once I've done that, I'm going to turn it into a percent. And to be fair, at this point in the exercise, you've done the analysis. Um, the reason I'm going to go a little bit further is because quite often Pareto analysis is shown in a pretty graph format. But already you can see here that these two, top two demand types, so demand A and D, create 78% of the demand on this particular team. Um, and that's what Pareto means. I know it's called the 80-20 rule, but it's never exactly 80-20. It's the rule of the significant few that creates uh, most work. And that's what you need to remember with the Pareto. So if I was to tackle demands A and D, that would give me better control over my demand. If I wanted to reduce demand coming into the team, I would look at those two demand types. But let me show you how you create the graph, which is quite often what you see when you look at demand analyses online. I'm going to highlight all the data and I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to insert a 2D column chart like that. I'm just going to drag that aside and move over. Move me as well. Uh, I'm going to head up the chart. Come on. Demand Pareto. And then what I'm going to do here, you can see at the side, we've got the demand volume. So go ahead and label all of this. That's fine. I won't show you how to do that. Um, but that's the demand volume. And demand, along the bottom, you've got the demand types. Now, this cumulative frequency isn't shown because, of course, that's, that's, that's a percentage. So you can't see it at the moment. But if I right click on cumulative frequency and go to format data series, I'm going to click this button here that says secondary access. Now that's going to put it into a bar chart, which we don't want. So if I go back to insert and click on this line graph, it's going to pop a line on it for me. So what you can see now is this is now a Pareto analysis chart. The line over here shows us where that 80% falls. So if I follow that across, track it across, you can see again, it's demands A and D that creates nearly 80% of the work for this particular team. Hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, please get in touch.